The 4.4 live stream has just wrapped up and we got a ton of information about the new patch, the new characters, the new skins, the new area. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I am so excited. But I wanted to talk about the characters that are rerunning and the new character and talk about which ones are the most valuable for your account. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. I think for this patch, the first half is a lot more valuable. So the first half is Chen Yun. Obviously, I have Jean here because she's not out yet, also known as the Cloud Retainer, and Nahida. Now, I've seen a lot of hate towards Chen Yun, and I'll be making a full pre-release guide that's going to be coming out tomorrow, so remember to subscribe for that. Subscribing also really helps the channel, so I would really appreciate if you could take time to do that. But here's the reality. The people that should be getting Cloud Retainer are anyone who A, has Farina, number one, anyone who B, doesn't have Jean. That's like, if you have Farina and don't have Jean, she is like pretty much a must pull, like as close to a must pull as you can get. Obviously, you might get Jean one day, but the odds, like I still, I have seven copies of Jean and I still don't have a single copy of Mona. I have tons of standard banner five star weapons, but I still don't have a single Lost Prayer or Skyward Harp. So you can't just assume that you're going to eventually get a standard banner five star. It may never happen. So yeah, Shen Yun, extremely valuable pull. The amount of different teams that you can make with the Jean Farina core is is huge like and the teams are just they just feel so strong for like no reason my favorite of course is the Ryan double hydro variant but any double hydro variant is just stupid and it, it can be with obviously it's just the Yalan Farina and Jean core is so stupid my favorite driver is Raiden but if you have a good run with Hu Tao that can be even stronger it often feels like Yoimiya's best team it's amazing for Kokomi um, and you don't even have to have Yalan you could be using Fischl you could be using Yai you could be using who, whoever you want in that in that other slot obviously Yamiko is the best but it's just such a strong amazing core and currently only people who have Jean can can do this so getting Shen Yun is going to be incredible because she's obviously an animal healer just like Jean is, but she also enables a new playstyle where you can weave plunges into your attack string. Now, that doesn't mean that your all your characters suddenly become plunge characters and all you're going to be doing is plunging. You're just going to be weaving in a few plunges at, into your normal attack combo that's going to make characters like Hu Tao even better. That's going to make Diluc actually good because his plunge multipliers are crazy. Um, and of course, I'm going to be testing all of this. So on day one, I'll be testing all of these characters with Shen to tell you exactly how strong it is but even you know characters like Yaimiko will want to use some plunge attack. Risley will get even better from using some plunge attacks and getting some melts off and there's going to be some crazy cool things um, that Shen Yun can make work that currently is just impossible so we won't know the full scope of it until we can really get our hands on her but if especially if you don't have Jean oh obviously the new character Gaming is going to be uh, really good with plunge attacks especially if you have C6 Bennett and stuff like that it's going to be really really cool. So A if you don't don't have Jean. B, if you want to use a certain subset of characters and just wait for my even my, my day one guide, other people's day one guides for them to test Jen and feel which of these new teams actually feel really good. Like if you're a Deluke main, you, it's like a must pull. You got you got to get her. And who knows what other characters like if it might be Risley's best team. Um, it'll even be an upgrade for characters like Raiden, who obviously she can use Jean and, and still be amazing. Like the team is incredible. But because Raiden will, she, you, she's a catalyst, so you'll be able to hold the thrill tales of, of Dragon Slayer, such as buff Raiden's attack, um, and that'll likely be a buff for Raiden. Hard to say exactly how much because Raiden doesn't benefit from Shen Yun's plunge buffs, which Shen Yun also has, but it's looking like it should be an upgrade. But is it an upgrade worth a The question for most of these characters is, is it an upgrade worth a whole five star? Because you could have spent that five star wishes on a weapon, on a constellation, on a different character. Is that really worth a five star pull? For me, it would be, even if I wasn't, even if I, you know, wasn't a content creator, just because I think weaving in plunges is a really cool uh, play style. Again, it's not like every character becomes Zhao and only wants to plunge. I think it's going to be really fun and really cool. But for a lot of people, I think if you already have Jean and you're not looking to main someone like Diluc or some of the other characters that are really want plunges, or obviously, obviously I haven't even talked about Zhao. Obviously, if you're a Zhao main, she will probably almost definitely be blessed in slot for Zhao because she also buffs plunges. I think she's going to be a very strong character, but I think people who already have Jean can
can often get away with skipping her, and skipping her could be very worth it if you're looking for someone like Nahida and you don't have Nahida. If you don't have Nahida, now this is a character that really can change your account. If you want to hear more about Shenyun, by the way, you know, I know I kind of just briefly touched on things and kind of assumed you knew a bunch of things. I'll be releasing my pre-release guide either right now, and if it is out right now, you can check the pinned comment, and if not, it'll be released tomorrow. But yeah, if you don't have Nahida and you're not like opposed to Nahida as a character or something like that, this is a character you should get. She opens up so many teams. Now, most of these teams are Hyper Bloom or Nilu Bloom teams, um, but also include Alhytham Spread um, and some other teams as well. You can get really creative because she's both can be an on-field driver or an off-field dendro applicator. She has buffing potential. She does really good off-field damage. Uh, she's amazing. She's one of the best characters in the game. Definitely top three. Could be argued to be the best character. I'm pretty firmly in the camp that Farina is the best character, but they do completely different things. I think Nahida's a little bit harder to replace than someone like Farina in some ways because Farina is an off-field Hydro Applicator, Nida is an off-field Dendro Applicator, and Dendro is a off-field Dendro is a bit harder to replace. There aren't that many characters that do really good off-field Dendro. Like Hyper Bloom without Nahida is just not the same. Nilu Bloom without Nahida is just not the same. And those are some of the strongest comps in the game. So it's basically like, unless there's some really, really good reason for you not to want Nahida, like you just don't play Dendro teams. Your te the teams that you use just don't use Nahida. Or you just don't like her model for some whatever reason. Or she's just an awesome character to have that just unlocks unlocks team um the second half of the patch and then we'll get into weapons is not nearly as valuable so i've got hazel representing zhao here because i don't have zhao yet as soon as he reruns i'll get him one of the three remaining characters five limited five stars that i don't have so really really excited but yaimiko and zhao so yaimiko is one of the lowest value characters while also being one of the stronger characters like i would say she's definitely one of the stronger characters in the game being able to work in aggravate taser chevrous she even she got a big buff with chevrous if you happen to get high constellation chevrous then yaimiko has really awesome teams with her um but yeah solid in taser solid in quick bloom in in, in quicken in aggravate teams yaimiko very very strong the thing is she's also very replaceable um you can use raiden or kaching or sino or lisa in place of her in basically any team and although she is generally right yai is generally the the best in slot compared to these characters in most of those teams yaimiko still is not so crazy of an upgrade that it's worth getting a limited five star to upgrade from a character that like kitching is a standard banner five star if you already have her it's kind of like why lisa is a free unit and you can get her constellations which take her to the next level just by saving up star glitter check out my lisa guide by the way under the guides playlist it's a really good guide lisa is very underrated and a lot of people maybe you're thinking of getting Yaimiko for your Tainari teams or for your Alhytham teams. And although, yes, Yaimiko is best in slot for those teams, Lisa is plenty good and plenty good in Aggravate and plenty good in Quick Bloom. Now, I don't do say that to discourage you from getting Yaimiko. I think Yaimiko is a very, very strong character. I think you'll be very happy if you get Yaimiko as long as you like her playstyle, right? Make sure you do the trial. Make sure you like her playstyle. I think you'll be very happy with how Yaimiko uh, produces. Um, she's also one of the best users of the Widsith weapon, which is normally very very cringe, but for Yaimiko, she really uses it well because she can actually use all three of the buffs. Um, she uses the standard banner catalysts very well. Uh, she has lots of great free to play teams. So she's a character that you can like definitely make a team for because Aggravate is one of the most free to play friendly team cores. You can pick up Yai, you can get Yao Yao from the Lantern Rite, you can get Sucrose. Hopefully, you have a Sucrose, I guess, or you can use Lynette, I guess, but Sucrose is noticeably better. And then Fischl, you can get from the shop, and you've got a team that will never struggle to 36 star the abyss because Yamiko very strong but again you don't have to use Yamiko you can use someone else um even though she is the best for those teams so yeah I think she's in a, she's one of the one of the better designed characters um in that way one of my favorite ways for a character to be is you know you can get them if you like them and they'll be great you won't really have unless you have a problem with her gameplay you won't ever be upset um because she feels very very strong and you will feel an upgrade compared to those other um those other characters that I mentioned in those teams um Zhao 
I guess so we'll put some respect on his name and go over here. Um, Zhao is a character that's in a bit of a tricky spot if you're not a dedicated Zhao main, because I do think he's strong. Like he's a, similar to Yai, he's a character that's very strong, but if you're not willing to go all the way to invest in him, then you might struggle. And so what are we talking about when I say investment? Well, he's a hyper carry. He requires high level of artifacts to really, and talents and levels and five-star weapon to really pop off. It doesn't have to be a signature. It could be Staff of Homa, could be something else. Um, even Calamity Queller, you know, like random other weapons, even Vortex Vanquisher, if you're using a shielder. Um, but he also really, really, really wants C6 Faruzan. And Faruzan has historically not run with Zhao banners and has only run on Wanderer banners, which really sucks because that means if you're going to be wishing for Wanderer, uh, if you're wishing on Wanderer banners for Faruzan, you probably will get a copy of Wanderer. And Zhao just like isn't an upgrade to Wanderer. I wouldn't say that Wanderer is an upgrade to Zhao either. I wouldn't say he's a downgrade to Wanderer. But if you're going to end up with C6 Faruzan from, from Wanderer banners, you'll probably end up with a C0 or C1 or C even C2 Wanderer, depending on how lucky or unlucky you get. And at that point, it's like, it, it's kind of awkward to roll for Zhao. So you kind of have to be dedicated on top of that. You know, you might have, but one nice thing is you might have a signature weapon from the standard banner. Um, I've talked in the past how his best artifact set is Vermilion, which it is, and it's in the strong box. But Mari Chasse, one thing I didn't consider at the time was that Mari Chasse and Golden Troop are so efficient to farm and they're so strong that using Mari Chasse on your Zhao, you'll probably get a really, really good Mari Chasse set on your Zhao. So I'll kind of backtrack on what I've said in the past is it could be very much worth it for you to go with Mari Chasse. The only unfortunate thing is that it's going to be hard to use his signature weapon and you kind of have to use Staff of Homa or a weapon that at least doesn't give crit rate because he can be pretty hard to build. But all that aside, as long as you can make it work, like he he has a free to play friendly artifact set is what I'm trying to say. And he has lots of good polearm options, which is good. Um, it's just getting together those supports. And now he kind of wants Cloud Retainer. Um, he kind of wants Bennett. And if you if you kind of wants Farina and if you're using those and you don't have Cloud Retainer or if you, even if you do, you're not using Zhang Li, that can make him harder to play. Um, I don't think you need a shielder for him, but for a more casual player, that's going to be hard to use him without a shielder. And yeah, overall, it's just he's in a tricky spot. He's definitely, again, not a character that you get for power or for account value. He's a character that you get because you like him. But as long as you're willing to invest him, he's going to be good. But unlike Yai, it takes more to get him going. But I think the ceiling he has, if you're willing to get him going, is definitely there. Um, I happen to have C6 Farzan and I have, I'm going to have Cloud Retainer. I'm going to have all this stuff. And I have a good Marisha say set almost for him. So I'm really, really, really excited to get him. But I think for a lot of players, just make sure you really love him and make sure you really love his playstyle. He's got kind of a unique playstyle. So make sure you really, really do love him before you actually go for him. So yeah, so that's my opinion on the value of these characters. Now let's talk about the weapon banner. So Shen Yun's weapon, along with Nahida's weapon, technically, uh, we actually don't know what Shen Yun's weapon is going to do. But I'm going to say it right now. Um, if we're going to predict what the weapon might do, it's looking like unless you're going to be really using her for Zhao in particular, and even then, it's hard to justify, um, it's hard to justify the pull. I would say if you want Nahida's weapon and you want, and you have Zhao and you're going to be using Shen Yun for Zhao, it could be worth it to go for this weapon banner. But I think for most people, this weapon banner is just going to be a skip. And again, we'll take another look when the weapon banner officially drops and we get a sense of the four stars and what's going on. But just from a five star perspective, it's looking pretty not that good, be especially since you should be able to get away with thrilling tails on Zhao teams because you'll get so many animal particles that y your energy won't be an issue. And Nahida has plenty of good free-to-play weapons. She's also a character that can use Wood Sith well. Um, she can use Sacrificial Fragments depending on the team you're using. Um, she can use a lot of different weapons. So you really, and she's not a character that needs a good weapon to really perform anyways. So I would say overall this weapon better. Like it's a good weapon. Don't get me wrong. Like if I would say this is a much better weapon for people who want Cloud Retainer's weapon than it is for people who want Nahida's weapon. If you want Nahida his weapon and you can't use her weapon that's going to be rough and then on the Zhao side it's tough Zhao's weapon is a standard banner weapon um Yamiko's catalyst is very good uh I was planning on going for it until I saw that she was paired with Zhao I already have a jade wing spear and I just got an early jade wing spear from the standard banner I definitely will not be wishing on this banner I cannot justify it and I really wanted Yamiko's weapon like I really really wanted it for my Raiden team for my Yamiko but I absolutely cannot justify wishing on this weapon banner. Um, I think a lot of people feel the same way
away, even if you may if you main Zhao and you don't have his weapon, you don't have a weapon at all, especially if you've been farming Vermilion, so you you're not gonna overcap on crit rate, then and you could use Yamiko's weapon, then you could wish on this banner. But unless you're in that circumstance, this is a tough one. This is a tough one to wish for. Uh hope they better really sweeten the deal with these far star five four stars, because so far the five stars from these weapons, uh from this banner is looking like a total skip. I definitely do not think either of these are worth it for the general player. There's some specific circumstances that could make these weapon banners worth it for you. Remember, if you're going to wish on these weapon banners, make sure you have at least 200 pulls before you go into it. You're going to get some pulls back from Star Glitter and whatever, but before you wish, make sure by the end of the banner, you can at least sink 200 in so you can guarantee yourself uh, whatever weapon that you really want, because the last thing you want is to end the banner with fate points that you can't use. Pity carries over, a lost 50-50 carries over, so if you get an off banner weapon, uh, those carry over to the next banner, but fate points do not carry over. You do not want to end the banner with fate points. So make sure you either make sure you plan out ahead. Um, but in general, yeah, that's that's what I think. Make sure you check out my video that's out right now to figure out which character from the four star selector you should get. This is a critical choice for free to plays. Make sure you don't choose the wrong one and make sure you subscribe for my Shanyun guide, which might be out right now, might come out later. Take care. Bye for now.